Hello YouTube, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new here, hi! My name is Rosie and I'm a New Zealander who lives in France and I make videos about New Zealand, France and all the travel we do in between. One of the questions that I get a lot from both French people but also the Europeans around me in general is what are the kind of rules for going to New Zealand, can you give me some tips? And it's kind of tough for me because New Zealand generally, you know, is full up of really laid back, easygoing people, and I would almost say that anything goes. They're open, they're friendly, and I think for most people traveling or even moving to New Zealand, it will be a relatively easy integration, I think, compared to what it could be in some countries. However, as with any country, as with any culture, there are definitely some sort of social norms and things that you do not do, either because it will be offensive, culturally inappropriate, or you'll just come across looking like a bit of a dick. This is what this video is about today, all of the things you do not do when you go to New Zealand. So the first thing not to do in New Zealand is disregard or disrespect the Māori culture. The Māori people of New Zealand, I guess, are what you would call our indigenous people of the country, and their rituals and their culture may not have really had the respect it deserves, you know, in the first wave of colonization and everything, but today, Māori culture, Māori language is becoming an integral part of the New Zealand society. And as part of that culture, there are some really important things that you need to know when you're traveling to New Zealand. The Māori people have a very special relationship with the land. There are many things to them that are absolutely sacred, mountains, forests, lakes, rivers, all of these kinds of things. And New Zealand was actually the first country in the world to give a river the same rights in terms of basic human rights around dignity and respect etc to a river so we take it pretty seriously concretely respect the environment you're in don't litter you know leave things as you found them and you know the basics would be never enter a marae unless you have been invited or unless someone is accompanying you. So you enter a marae and this is kind of leaked over into general society if you enter someone's home, always take off your shoes. And another big thing not to do, coming from Māori culture as well, is to sit on tables because that's tapu. Sitting on tables is seen as something that's incredibly disrespectful. Another thing that you definitely do not want to do in New Zealand is mess with the All Blacks. <laughs> You know, our national rugby team, you may have heard of them, it's kind of like a local religion and you may say it's just a game, it's just a bit of sport, but for a lot of New Zealanders it's so much more than that. <laughs> it's uh, Rugby is a really inherent part of our culture. I wouldn't openly be like, oh, such a waste of time, such a stupid game. You know, I've heard people be like, oh, why do you guys like rugby so much? It's so boring and that kind of thing. Beware <laughs> that that may have some negative reactions from people if you do that. Another thing to not do in New Zealand is go there without reading the New Zealand road code and understanding a little bit about the driving rules. Because we drive on the left-hand side of the road, which not everyone's used to, our roads can be very windy going through mountains and hills. Um, they can be very remote. You may be driving and be all alone for hours and hours and hours. And they may not always be in you know, perfect condition, especially in the more remote areas. I would be the first to admit that I think New Zealanders do get road rage. Um, if we've grown up there, we're used to driving on these kinds of roads. We can go quick. We get very frustrated if people are driving slowly. So if you do feel uncomfortable on new roads, like that's fine, but just own it and pull over regularly to let other people go past you because otherwise the road rage will start to build, I'm sure. And it sounds stupid, but don't think that you can fly all the way to Auckland hop in a rental car and drive to your destination. We've had quite a few news stories of people coming, you know, over to New Zealand for business from Asia, for example, and you think, oh, Asia, it's just next door. But depending where you are, it can be 13, 14, 15 hours away. So they'll fly in, they'll hire a rental car, and there'll be a big accident on the road. So don't underestimate how jet lagged you'll feel. Like stay somewhere close to the airport the first night or have a sleep or something. Another thing, pretty obvious, but please don't think that we're Australians. New Zealand and Australia are different countries. Yes, we both speak English, but we've actually got different accents, um, different cultures, different outlooks and completely different scenery. People think that New Zealand's right next door to Australia, but the closest possible point is still a three hour and 45 
minute flight. If you had to take an almost four hour flight from Paris, you could end up in Stockholm, you could probably get to Moscow. Like it's, it's really not the same thing. So if you come up to us like, oh, g'day mate. Hey, have you seen the kangaroo? Like we'll be like, New Zealand's not Australia. We don't have kangaroos, we don't have koalas, we don't have snakes, we don't have wallabies. You know, even in France, I've had someone say to me, oh, where are you from? And I'd be like, oh, New Zealand. And they'll be like, oh, I loved Sydney. Like, come on guys. I kind of touched on it before, but something that's really important that you don't do in New Zealand is litter. My gosh, we grow up learning to be a clean, green Kiwi. We learn to recycle from a very young age. We're very careful about our environment. We want to preserve it as much as possible. And of course, we're happy to welcome tourists. And if we see you littering, like you will get called out and just, it's just, such a dick move. On the other side, a thing that really gets to New Zealanders a lot is spitting as well. I've seen, you know, some cultures it's normal to spit and stuff in their countries and um, if they come and spit in New Zealand, I've definitely seen New Zealanders like calling people out on that like, hey mate, um, we don't do that here, please don't do that. Again, it's, I think it's seen as kind of being maybe dirty on the streets and it's almost got the same association as littering as well. Another thing is don't go without learning a little bit of Kiwi slang because New Zealand kind of has its own language going on sometimes. It's of British English, American English, a bit of Australian English, and then we've got our whole, you know, a whole nother category happening as well with the influence from the Maori culture and all of that. Um, so it's really important that you learn some Kiwi slang so that you can understand what's being said around you. But don't worry, I've got you sorted. I've done two videos on this topic and I'll leave them down below. Next, don't assume that we all know each other. My gosh, like I know we have a small population, 4.5 million, but <laughs> still guys, over in Europe, whenever I say that I'm from New Zealand, they're like, oh, I have a second cousin that was in New Zealand and she was living with Maria White. Do you know Maria White? I'm like, what? Like the chances of us knowing each other are relatively high maybe, but it's definitely not a given. Another thing that doesn't go down super well culturally is haggling and bargaining. Um, so it's not really in the culture. You can give it a go, I guess, but don't push and push and push because if they say no, you know, maybe once, twice, it's probably not gonna happen. I remember I used to work in retail in a jewelry store and the prices on sale, for example, were the final prices. There was nothing I could do. I could not sell that item. I could not scan it through the computer for a lesser price. I could not modify the price, like the sale items were fixed. And I'd have people that pushing and pushing and pushing to get a discount and it's just not going to happen. Not because I don't want to, but it's like literally nothing I say. Like the prices are fixed. We don't have a negotiation, bartering, haggling kind of culture. And so we literally don't have the systems in place to give you the discounts that you desire. Another what not to do in New Zealand is do not assume that we've got good public transport because we don't. <laughs> we really, really don't. Um, you know, if you want to travel around New Zealand, you're going to need a car for sure. Within the big cities, there are buses, but we don't even have underground trains. In Auckland City, for example, you fly into the airport. The only option you have to get from the airport to the city centre is bus or taxi slash car. There's no trains, not ideal. And so just plan that because you can get a lot of cheap buses and transport and you can, you know, buy vans from other backpackers and you can hire cars, but you're probably going to need a driver's license if you want to see a lot of the country. Another what not to do is don't come to New Zealand and not go off the beaten track. You've got a country where some areas are just so well preserved. You feel like it's the beginning of time. It's really, really incredible. And you know, I know that logistically, it's, it may be easier for tourists to stay around Queenstown and Rotorua and Auckland and Wellington and that kind of thing, but it would be such a shame to waste a trip to New Zealand on the cities. The cities aren't very good looking. They don't have that European architecture. So it's they're just full of semi-modern buildings, but the nature in New Zealand is pretty insane. So, you know, as I said just before, you, you may need to hire a car, but do what you've got to do to go to the more remote areas because that's where the magic happens. On the other hand, I want to just advise 
don't try and see too much. New Zealand is a country that's incredibly diverse. So I can imagine it's super tempting because you've got a more like tropical beachy vibe up the top of the North Island. You've got glaciers and Alps and fjords down in the South Island. The cool thing about New Zealand is that you can drive for two hours and you'll see a completely different look, a completely different landscape. And to be honest, I think if you want to do both the North and the South Island, you need at least four weeks and that would be rushed. Stick to one island because as I said, the landscapes will change so rapidly. It's not like Australia where you need to drive for like hours and hours for the landscape to change. So don't stress too much. You'd be much better off going deeper into the area that you're based in or the island that you've selected than trying to see absolutely everything in the one trip. Another thing that you don't have to do in New Zealand, it's not necessarily don't do it, but um, you don't have to tip. And I think you'll be pleasantly surprised with the service in New Zealand. I find people, um, compared to the European normal anyway, so friendly and kind and genuine. Obviously, if you have excellent service, it's up to you what you wanna do with your money, but um, people in hospitality roles and customer service are getting paid a base salary. So you, do, don't, you don't need to tip them. It's not like the US, for example. Cool guys, well I hope you found this video useful. If you're a Kiwi watching this and I missed anything out, just let me know down below. Or if you have any questions about life in New Zealand, visiting New Zealand, all that kind of stuff, ask me down below in the comments because I may know the answer. And if you like videos about New Zealand, New Zealand culture, travel vlogs in New Zealand, do think about subscribing because content like that comes up on my channel quite often. So until the next video Wednesday, I'll see you guys next time. A bientôt!